Today we're redesigning Quora, and Quora is a weird website. It's one of the biggest sites out there that somehow has able to squeak by with an okay user experience for like the past 20 years. Um, and that annoys me. We're gonna redesign the site today. Uh, specifically, we're going to design the search UX for any kind of question. In this case, how do I design a website? And as you can see, there's a lot of usability problems here. Namely, you've got lots of icons up here that aren't labeled. I have no idea what any of these do. The information hierarchy is okay. This big bold text pulls me in, but it could be better. But then the information hierarchy kind of falls apart when I come down to the body here and my attention gets yanked around with all this bold text and random bits of color. So we're gonna see what we can do to tidy that up. Here we've got the style guide as always pulled straight from their site. Um, the only changes we've made are the font. We're using aileron as a nice body and utility text. Um, and we're complementing that with freight text, a really beautiful serif font. And of course, here's the stories, everything I wanna achieve in a UI like this. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're just asking questions, getting a list of answers. Let's get going. The first design challenge that we're tackling, as always, is the header. Uh, the navigation for Cora was quite confusing and there were lots of icons that didn't have labels, so I initially didn't really know what they did. Uh, so we're simplifying things significantly, moving the user menu over to the right, um, keeping some standard links on the left, and then creating a secondary navigation where users can switch between contexts and view different parts of the site, uh, depending on uh, what they want to consume that day. I was recently asked by one of my subscribers to show kind of what goes on behind the scenes. And oftentimes when I'm working on a very particular design problem and I'm just hitting roadblock after roadblock, um, I'll reach out for some inspiration through other similar interfaces to see if I can figure out a solution that makes sense. Here I'm drawing inspiration from the Stripe dashboard header, uh, where you've got an avatar that's slightly bigger than the two buttons, and the buttons themselves have nice, clean, rounded outlines. This pattern works well, so we're just gonna steal it. Of course, the navigation is only useful for people to find where they're trying to go, but once they've found that page, we then need to present them with information that's relevant to them in a sequence that's relevant to them as well. So of course, first thing we're doing is making the question itself big and bold, and then adding some metadata all around it uh, that's obviously subdued, intended to describe that bigger piece of information. It also made sense that if a user is interested in finding the answer to one particular question, they might also be interested in several related questions. So pushing them off to the sidebar to accomplish two things. First, we give the user the option to view those related questions, but second, we try not to distract them from their main question very much. Um, and that's the purpose of the sidebar on most main content sidebar layouts on the internet. And I think a lot of designers fall into this trap of constantly feeling the need to reinvent the wheel to kind of prove themselves as a designer. Uh, but that's very risky and the user pays the cost to that because <laughs> you could potentially redesign something that's actually quite hard to use. Um, so instead, I like to lean on existing established patterns that exist elsewhere on the web and just kind of clone a lot of the paradigms into my existing designs so that we're minimizing the risk of going totally sideways. And of course, what better UI to draw inspiration from than Stack Overflow, probably the most established question and answer platform on the internet. Here we're pulling inspiration from their answers, header, and sort controls. And later in the redesign, you'll see that we're also pulling inspiration from their upvote controls that we'll place just to the left of each individual answer. Now that we're creating the single answer component, I thought that it was kind of strange that on Quora, the author was displayed before the response. But from the user's perspective, the person who's interested in getting an answer, they really only want to see the answer. Whether or not that was written by a subject matter expert is secondary to that.
Now, of course, since we've introduced components that have states, we need to indicate to the user that a state change has happened. And in this case, we're talking about the upvote buttons. How do I know if I've already upvoted something? Well, of course, we can use color to indicate that state change and highlight both the button that was pressed, upvote or demvote, and the number to indicate that you've clearly influenced the total vote by clicking on that control. Although the related question links on the right here definitely provide a lot of affordance that they are links by being blue, I'm realizing that they're pulling quite a bit of visual attention. So I'm gonna subdue the color and make them gray, but then we run into the problem of not knowing that they're links. So we have to add some sort of flare on there to indicate that these are clickable links. And we get around that problem by making them into their own component, um, adding the total vote count onto each individual link, and then presumably, although I didn't do it in this UI, adding an arrow on each text item to indicate that that link will take you somewhere. Just want to quickly call out a subdue pattern here. Whenever you have some kind of control that needs to be visible, but you don't want users to be distracted by it, I'm just Placing a simple little opacity filter on it like we do here for the report a problem button usually solves that problem. And in August of 2023, when people have questions, they're starting to increasingly not go to places like Google and instead open up ChatGPT. Uh, so why not get ahead of the curve here, Cora, and implement some kind of mechanism to use ChatGPT to generate an answer to the question in advance and place it alongside the human written answers. This also has an added side effect, which is probably a win from, for the user, um, that it takes the financial incentive to just spam answers to questions that are in your particular niche uh, away from uh, the human actors here. So I think this is a cool little add-on that they should definitely implement. Okay, and here we are. I feel like this is a UI that solves all the problems that Core is solving today, but in a much better, more modern way. Uh, so of course, we've simplified the navigation significantly. We've split up the UI into lots of different contexts using the tabs. And then the information hierarchy has been completely overhauled. We're pulling attention straight to how do I design a website? A little bit of metadata that's not really relevant, so it's very clearly subdued. Uh, we've got the controls up here where they're expected to be. Then immediately our, our attention flows into this list of answers here. Um, notably, there is a special area here where I can use AI to generate an answer. So this is how I would expect a UI like this to work. This kind of captures the essence of what Cora could be. Um, a really awesome, performant, community-based question and answer platform. But of course, it's not perfect. So let me know what you think in the comments. And if you have any other suggestions for something you'd like redesigned, please pop it in there as well. Hope you're having a great week, folks. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.